I am going to install this brand new 12.3 inch Android 11 multimedia navigation system inside of my E92, which requires cutting an enormous hole in the dash. Let's do it. Make sure you line that up because the F30s, it kind of sits like this. And I, I didn't like it at all. And that sat with it like pushing against the, the normal gauges over there. So I, I, I don't think I would get the 12.3 for the F30. But for the E90s and possibly the older ones, I think it's good to go. Use these sticker marks like that. So if that little uh, trilateral reference positioning point sits right there, then you can hold up the unit and make sure that it's good for you use plastic because you're gonna have to Dremel and or some sort of rotary cutting tool and it's gonna get everywhere so to save yourself the pain just get a piece of plastic I wiped the dash off with some alcohol I'm going to take the bottom point first I lined it up. No matter what I do, the red line is not going to be perfectly straight. I was more focused this time on getting the red line edges in between the vents. So I messed with it a bit and it uh, that's just what it's going to be. But I think the actual positioning will come down to mounting in the inside. So I don't think it's going to have that much of a problem. So let's try number two. Sticks really well, but rips like now. Like one of those damn tags from Ross. Now, what I'll probably do is just put some masking tape around the edges. I'm going to be lenient on what I actually cut, and then I'll, I'll expend out as I go if I have to. So I was going to get the Dremel from Costco, but I just ended up paying twenty bucks for this. It's the corded one make sure to get the corded one not the wireless one and it comes with some attachments but I just bought a guy from Harbor Freight I bought this which I think was three dollars or something these are inch and a half so this should be fine to cut it here is the prepared product it's, it's tucked into the windshield goes down about center cup holder so, the scary part is now going to be cutting the dash. Make sure to wear extremely stupid looking safety goggles. The stupider they look, the better they work. We'll see how that fares. Alright, so don't dremel the cloth. Definitely know that for other folks. Flathead, try to get this out. Yeah, well, so much for saving that piece. Let's see. Peel it from bottom. Peel it from bottom, you can get it. That's that, and then there's a thick layer of foam, glued. Alright, it's ugly. But it's there. Scary. Shit. I must have 
this again. It's getting so hot that some of the pieces are plastic welding back together, it seems. <laughs> hmm. There's that. Jeez, what a disaster. And then there is another layer of foam stuffing. Check the bracket seems to be okay, so I'm gonna really pull all this crap out now. Still made a mess. If you have even bigger plastic, use it. There it is. When you think of 12.3 inch, you think this is gonna be a much bigger uh, hole in the dash, but it's it's really not that big. There's like a pinky finger, so it's not too bad. Um, this metal piece sits like this in there and there are two bolt holes and then it slides into these grooves here and then there are screw holes to, to screw this in but too bad. You're going to have to play with this a bit to get it to sit right. No matter what I do, it's not going to sit perfect. This side, you can get it flushed. The left side, I cannot. No matter what I do. And when I stick a flashlight in there, it looks like this edge here and this edge here were impeding on these little mounting points. So what I did is I just cut another quarter inch off just in case, because these don't seem to serve any purpose. I don't know exactly why you cut this sort of Lego bit. Got it to sit flush enough, so what I'm gonna do is just continue installing the metal plate and see what happens. It fits. It's not perfect, but it fits, and it's really hard to tell unless you're looking for it. I know the screw, there's only one screw in there. And then I'm going to screw the plate into the plastic piece and screw it into that. And right now I'm taking out my radio so I can go ahead and start connecting everything. Side note, if you get any of the stickers on your fence or anything here, use WD-40, it takes it off almost instantaneously. I removed the screw from the left right there. T20. In order to access the two screws from the bottom, you're going to have to pull the, the vent out. There is one plug in here behind the start button. It's right there. It just squeezes off. And there are two other plugs underneath in here. And one is easy to get on top. The other one's not. To get it, if I recall, I had to remove the actual clips all the way around the plastic vent part. I am not going to do that. I'm just going to let it dangle for now. So to each their own, but it's a pain to get to in there. It's a stupid design and accessible through the top up there. So now you can get to those screws without having too much trouble. Here's the piece that sits on top. It sits like this because the screen locks into there. Turn it upside down and you're going to put the plate in. You're going to slide the plate in to these little grooves right here. 
Okay. And you want to make sure that the plate is sitting like this because there's how it would sit on the dash and it will angle backwards. It's going to come with four little screws and you're just going to screw them into there. That's what I'm going to do right now. This definitely takes some fidgeting before you get it in. I, I worried more about this right side here. This so left side just isn't going to happen. Well, the plates are lined up right there. You kind of have to hold the top in while you push the bottom in. I couldn't I can't really record it, but it's just going to take trial and error to get this on. If something happens in the future, I'm just going to put a piece of VHB tape on the base there. Found another screw to fit in the right side. It's actually a little, it's going to have to be fatter than the one on the left. Bigger diameter because uh, the hole is different. I think this is a wood screw actually to thread because I'm not sure. It looks like there's metal plate behind there, but I think it's plastic that it's threading into right now. Anyhow, it's flush. Even from the front, there's there's this angle of, you can see the hole. So again, I don't know why the hole was supposed to be drilled so large. It made no sense. In retrospect, I would not drill the hole as big. Nor those Lego cuts, did they do anything? It's in there. It's pretty solid. The bracket holds it fairly well, but it pops out. So no matter what I do, it just does not fit in there. Well, unfortunately, I'm just gonna have to deal with it. So, it is what it is. I'm gonna start wiring it in. I have other Wi Fi antennas ran through the pillar on the driver's side. This one, I think I'm gonna run just through the center part here. And I think I'm just gonna let it sit here to space out the antennas. And I, <laughs> I can't even remember where I ran the GPS of the other one, but I think I ran it in the down there in the base, so the Wi-Fi is up. The Wi-Fi is up at the top. The pillar, the GPS is down towards the base. I guess I will try to do something similar. The Wi-Fi antenna is the long stick. I should have just said that. Sorry. That's the Wi-Fi antenna. It's got adhesive. You must stick it somewhere, but I'm not going to. This is the GPS antenna. It may have been backwards. It's been a while since I've been on radio, but I think that's correct. Either way, just try to space them apart. Put them up high, put them somewhere behind plastic, really not metal. So I think I'll drag one all the way out to the edge and then I'll leave the one in the center. I'm taking a long zip tie, one of the really big ones that you can use to handcuff people. And I just taped the antenna connector on the end. And I'm going to run it through okay so I ran it through the base part closer to the floor and that brought it through it somewhere by the edge here, probably just right on top of the cup holder. There's the GPS antenna, just stuck on top. Good enough for now. There's absolutely no instructions to this mess either, so keep that in mind. Off the main harness here, this is harness number one that I'm labeling. I'm labeling the 88953 as harness number two because it does more things and then the last one I'll label as number three it's the smallest one and that's just a USB that's the main harness connector there and it stems off into this line and this line goes up to the main harness on the actual system in the back of it you'll have the audio in and out 3.5s here they'll come connected you'll disconnect them you're only going to use this one here to plug into your OEM system or to your aftermarket jack. This one is an audio input. You can extend this out. You can probably run the wire under there and have an aux cable just hanging out and ready to go if you want to plug in any sort of device. This pink one you don't use. This red one for accessory is typically a power wire. It basically turns the system off when your car is off for this car, you don't need to use this. This is, I, I, main, I mainly have used this in older vehicles. Now the X1 key here 
is supposedly for iDrive. If I recall, I tested it, and I'm going to test this again in a minute, but it did not function with the iDrive controller here. My assumption is that you would use this X1 key if you had the stock navigation unit in here. But I, I have a suspicion that this X1 key is just an alternative for the iDrive controller if the other one's not functioning for you. So if the iDrive controller is not functioning, there are some settings inside the unit as well. I believe just two settings, just sort of an A or B. If those aren't working, then you would possibly swap to this wiring. However, for my car, for the pre-LCIs, the other one's working, and I'm going to point that out now. So I just wanted to label the main harness. The last line is this CAN1 to CAN B. You just leave this connected. It just loops. It does nothing. It just it connects into here. You might have to change that if you ran into some other issues. And again, you can change the you can change the CAN bus in the factory settings too, in the deep factory settings. This is a fuse. This will pop first. If you short something out, check this in here to see if you popped. What's a stick right there, the clear one. Okay. But another thing coming off of this that I didn't mention, that I, well, I didn't connect the dots, is the speaker wire, which is supposedly for navigation voice guidance. I couldn't get the thing to work with anything, including the speakerphone, the gong, anything else couldn't get to work. This white line, which runs to this speaker, which I'm not exactly sure if that's supposed to be speakerphone or whatnot. I'm going to let that hang out through the bottom, probably. But you do have these three cables, which are for the backup camera, which I already discussed. But basically, you'll just be using the black one here, which goes to the yellow RCA plug, like that. And you'll have the red one, which will be 12 volts. And that will, you'll either connect that up here so you can choose, when you buy your backup camera, whichever one you choose, you can choose to run the wire and connect a 12 volt source in the trunk, which can also cause static. You may have to do a couple of things. Or you can run the red wire all the way to the front and connect it to this 12 volt source here. The pink one is for 360 cameras and you don't need it. It just hangs out. Let's talk about the main harness clip. So you'll get this sort of, looks like a mess back here, sorry, but you'll have this connected long sort of bundle of wires here. You'll connect one side of it with the clip to the factory stuff coming out of the firewall and you'll connect the other side to where you disconnected the original one and this will go to your stock stereo system or your aftermarket stereo system. So basically you're just putting a, in, a run in between them both and kind of splicing into it without cutting any wires. It's pretty nice. This clasp sort of comes down and up so you just leave it lifted up and that basically opens it and then you take the other end like this, you just squeeze it together, it should just go in there freely, absolutely no pressure required. If there's pressure, you're gonna bend a pin, so you clearly have it wrong. No pressure whatsoever, and then this just guides it in, that's it. To undo it, it's a little bit of pressure to snap it up, and once you do do that, you just lift it, and it kind of, once you lift it to this point, it kind of already pries it out, and then it just freely should just slide out. Those pins right there, you wanna line up with this section here, because if you look closely, you can see the labeling of the pins. And right here is for the Logic 7 system where the fiber optic cables will run. There are two green wires, one's in a black sheath. I have it, but I, oh no, you know what? They are still here. Let's see, I'll show you. So those are the Logic 7 wires. To remove it, I believe you just put a small screwdriver right there on the bottom. And you can either push through the center hole to push the the tab down, which may not work, or you can put a screwdriver between that little tab right there, inside, right there, and between that and the and the clip right there, and you just push push the flathead and just kind of pop that out. So this little tab will come downward slightly. It will just slightly come down and then pop out, and then you can pull it out of the old one and put it in the new one. That's it for the main harness number one. KJD8953, the harness, the medium sized harness that I labeled number two, has basically two things you'll need. The microphone input, 3.5, and the iDrive connection, which is not labeled, but it is the iDrive connection. You also have a video in, a DVR video in, and 
a left and right auxiliary input if you want to add other things. The thicker one here with the white and black end, the white part goes into the iDrive thing here. To recap once again, KJD D102506, which is just the four wired cable coming from the iDrive controller, connects to the cable with the red, black, white, and green. You want to run these two USB units to somewhere accessible. For the KJD8080 USB, it's just two cables, and I run it to the top, and I've run down. I've run one down to each side here. This one is for the wireless or the wired Android Auto when I need it, and the other one is just empty on the other side. You could also run it into your glove box right here. This is where I ran my JBL MS8 and another USB to my other system. Right there. Ultimately, you're going to run five wires through to this. The two antennas and the three harnesses. The biggest one is one, the middle sized one is two, and the last one is three. And you can see they plug into there. So one on top, two on the bottom right, three on the bottom left. That's how I'm labeling them. The fun part's going to be fitting all that crap back through. Ah, uh, I did notice from the top when this is sitting up there, all the stickers show. So take off these stickers, this one and this one especially. Right. I'm going to take these off because it shows and the outside looks ugly. Just remember there's a SIM card and TF card slot there. When you have the unit down, you can plug these in. You basically just slide this one on. You take this one, you thread it on here. Those are the two antennas. And then the other ones will just pop in the slot there. It looks like there's a screen protector on here. Plastic piece. You can leave that on until you get another one. I already played with this, so I have Spotify on here. On most cars, you'll have the regular shifter. You just pull it straight up. What you'll do is you'll grab the inside of the the uh, cover here, and you'll just kind of pop it out. I'm stuck with coffee, I'm sure. You'll have two lines in here. I've already damaged mine pretty badly, but you'll just unclip these. Take off your shift knob. Okay, so that whole thing comes off. Now you'll have to lift the center console up a little bit to to release this, basically you're just going to pop this out, so I'll just how to do that with two hands to control it. So this is what's going to happen. You can put the car in reverse or all the way down to the lowest gear to get this out easier. And then basically you're just going to pull this out and swap the center tray here with the iDrive controller. Pretty much nothing to it after you get this far. So. Just uh, take it easy when you pull this stuff out. So there's just a tab on this side and this side. You kind of just pry them outwards and then it has to hook up towards the towards the front because there's two little latches here. I'm going to take the back, put it in like this. Make sure those two hooks are good. Slide it around this to make sure the outer one on this side is pushing out when I snap it in. Right, I'm going to have to use both hands. For the iDrive wire, you're going to have to run it here. It's going to plug in somewhere here. I suggest you zip tie it to these wires here. It runs here because you don't want it impeding anything with the shift. And then you're going to have to run it under that grate right there that uh, black checkered thing. It has to go underneath there. That's where everything sits. Everything has to go underneath there that I've wired. You're just gonna pull it up through the right side of the vent here. Pull it up through the right side and then it will be right here. When you pop the panel back on, it will look like this. Not too bad. 
Now you just screw in the antenna, pop in the blue antenna, and then pop in the three wires, the three plugs back here for the three um, wiring harnesses. And you're just going to work your way through. And you can see the, the four pegs right there line up against those and then they'll lock in when you're ready. Also you're going to have to make sure you tuck all these wires out of the way here or up. Maybe zip tie them for now so you can get the vents in without issue. Another nice thing about this unit is the ports for the SD and TF card are right here on the side and accessible always. I believe the older unit you had to remove the unit and take a cover off so that's pretty nice. Yay, the cover comes off. Woohoo! Okay, that's a lot. I'm gonna put a screen protector on. <laughs> Ultimately, this is all plug and play. It's very simple. You can pretty much just follow the few basic steps and get your car up and running. You won't have to splice anything for the most part. Everyone will have a different setup and a different design, but the general consensus is that most of it will just plug right in and function. The hole in the dash is a bit scary. In retrospect, as I stated all along, I probably would have made the hole smaller to start with, even smaller inside of the guideline bracket, and I also probably would have made it an exact circle without the little sort of grooves cut into it. I still don't see the purpose of that, but you can probably try to cut a hole smaller and then add those later. If this helped you out with your car design ideas, please like the video. Go ahead and subscribe for the upcoming review of this unit, which will describe how the functions work, go a little more in depth about the system itself, as well as describe my long-term usage and my thoughts on that. Maybe that will help you decide to invest in this or not. That one will be coming up shortly. So again, please subscribe. Thank you very much for the support. I hope this helps you out and good luck on your own projects. Take care.